Ist das ein Brocken? If we did a survey among parents, asking which was the most preferred toy for their kid, I bet you the first place on the leaderboard would be the toy train set. Who doesn't own one from Brio, Duplo, Lego or Maclean? And the steam locomotive is certainly the predominant one, even if it doesn't smoke like this one from Brio. If we wanted to build a big one by ourselves, big enough for a kid to sit inside with pedals like a go-kart, what would we need? There are certainly many ways to do it, but I may present you how I solved it. These pieces on the shelf that look like supersized Fischer Technik elements are from a commercially available construction system from Infento, made in the Netherlands. The Infento elements can be used to build many different kids' rides by downloadable instructions but you can also build something freestyle and buy eventually missing parts via their latest online spare part shop for a fair rate. Frame concept. So let's build the locomotive's frame first. What is important to make it look like a locomotive? I would say we need two sets of small wheels at the front and at least one set of narrow big wheels at the rear. Here is the first challenge. How can we steer two parallel front axles? When you steer a front carriage with two axles, the wheels are scratching sideways over the ground and this would lead to very high steering forces. Too difficult for a kid. So we need to make use of a trick. Here you can see I introduced another set of small wheels. These wheels are almost hidden. Only these hidden wheels are in contact with the ground, as they are mounted some 10 mm deeper. The other four wheels that are visible are effectively floating over the ground, so our locomotive is virtually a three-wheeler. The hidden front wheels are located right underneath the steering axis. They are driving the visible two sets of wheels by a belt drive to maintain the impression that they are actually rolling. I use 3D printed sprockets and belts. I am linking the related files in this video's description. Speaking of a steering axis, a real train doesn't require a steering as the rail forces the wheels to steer. But our train is running on tarmac and not on rails. Therefore, we need to have a steering system. I kept this very simple by a long rod that is hidden inside the steam boiler. 
The big wheels at the rear are driven by pedals of course. The challenge with pedals is always to maintain enough room for the kit's feet to rotate, back to front as well as sideways. Especially to this side that space was very limited, because this locomotive needed to have a very narrow track width to make it look realistic. The power of the pedals is transferred by a tooth belt to the rear axle. Only one rear wheel is driven by the belt. The other rear wheel is just rolling free, so we don't need a differential. Now, a really important feature on a steam locomotive are the moving connecting rods. The solution was to extend the rear axle to both sides and to fit cranks. The cranks drive the connecting rods. And these transfer their motion over hinge elements onto the linear guided push rods. The push rods are sliding in axle clamps that don't clamp. Unfortunately, this added some friction, but with some silicon oil it was running much smoother. As a nice side effect, the back and forth motion of the push rods created a quite authentic shh sound. The black covers that imitate the steam cylinders are the skis that I borrowed from Infento's super cool snow add-on kit. Now we are done with the crucial elements of the frame. As I got many requests on how to build this steam locomotive, I have set up a PDF document for you to download showing the length and position of all elements used. Decorative elements. Let's add some nice design elements. The rooftop is just made from an Infanto cardboard box that became very stiff when I bent it into arc shape. The cowcatcher at the front was made from some outdated Infanto seat pads, as well as the air shields alongside the steam boiler that were meant to keep the view of the locomotive's driver free from steam and smoke. Last but not at all least, I needed a steam boiler and a smokestack. I wasn't creative enough to find a solution made from Infanto parts, so I started my search for something suitable on a budget. I was lucky to find this brand new black 60 liter oil barrel for only 32 euros including shipping. No, it's not a barrel, it's a hobok. That means you don't just have a small hole for draining the content, but you can remove the whole lid by detaching a clamping ring. That was ideal, because it gave good access to the steering. I cut a passage for the steering rod in the front area with a hole saw. Sorry for this shaky video, it was recorded by my 4 year old son who helped me. For the support of the boiler I used four 3D printed rubbers, hoping it would reduce the noise while driving. The barrel was attached to the frame by some black tension straps. The smokestack was a piece of 125mm spiral ducts used for ventilation systems in buildings. At first I used the 3D printed plastic adapter and some adhesive tape to attach the funnel, but that didn't give me long term confidence. I intended to create smoke with real fire inside the funnel, so I ended up spot welding the funnel to the boiler. An access opening at the bottom of the funnel allowed to ignite the fire and at the same time it acted as air supply to keep the fire burning. A simple grate made from a PC ventilation grid improved the combustion. To create really dense smoke my kids found out that some charcoal lighters under a thin layer of wet oak leaves led to a nice result for about 6 to 8 minutes. At the time finishing this ride it was cold in dark January, so I added some LED lights at the front and at the back for safety. Speaking of safety, here comes the ultimate hack exclusively for my faithful followers. 
Here you can see some plastic strips that I purchased for a few bucks on eBay. These are inexpensive covers that are meant for Bosch profiles with 10mm grooves. They fit perfectly into the Infento profiles. This is 10mm wide reflective tape from 3M. It reflects light in the same way you may have seen on kids jackets or running gear. When you stick this tape onto the plastic strips and cut them into pieces of 200 or 240 millimeters, they can be added to any ride you build in the future. How can this safety feature be missing on your kids in Fento ride if it can be found on any bicycle and on any school bag? Finally driving! Just a few critical remarks about driving the steam locomotive. Due to the weight and all the friction it was quite exhausting to drive for my youngest kids with 4 and 7 years of age, but okay for some 500 meters in the neighborhood. My daughter struggled with the limited space in the pedal area for her winter shoes in size 34. Steering worked very well, as long as we stayed on flat road. The smokestack could have been some centimeters higher in order to get the smoke out of the kid's face. But believe me, the smoke was the key attraction on this ride. The neighbor's kid stood in a circle around it in amazement. I bet we could have used the locomotive to sell hot chestnuts at the Christmas market. So that's pretty much it for today. It was great for me having had you as guest on my channel. If you like this video, I would be more than happy if you click the like button. Subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell for not missing the upcoming videos. We'll see you again soon. This is me. I may introduce myself. My name is Jan Wittholz. I am the bald haired guy trying to entertain you on YouTube since 2018. The technical stuff that is based on these super universal system parts offered by Infento. Me and my wife are running a family of eight in southern Germany. To understand the background of my motivation to build a steam locomotive you have to know that I work as a design engineer in the German automotive industry. What is being produced here by hand is a clutch for a car. 80% of all petrol driven cars that were ever built on this world in the past 137 years are equipped with such a clutch. I have been working for more than two decades on this topic and there is more knowledge and experience in designing and producing a clutch than it may appear at first sight. But the days of the petrol driven engines are counted. Electric cars are now the future. And electric cars don't need a clutch. The conversion of the automotive industry is in full progress, so the particular science behind the design and the production of clutches will get forgotten within the next generation. Don't get me wrong, I fully approve that the trend to electric cars is sensible. But I feel sorry for the incredible huge loss of knowledge and facilities of anything that is related to the powertrain of petrol driven cars. You think this process is unreal? Too visionary? We all fill up our cars with petrol, don't we? So it is hard to believe that one day it will be hard to find a mechanic that is able to repair your engine. Then let's go one step backwards and have a look into the museum that treats of an incredible technology that was almost without alternative only one and a half generations ago. Steam locomotives. You think this is too vintage? Mankind was able to fly to the moon by 1969. But the last steam locomotive in West Germany had its last operation no earlier than 1977. In East Germany even in 1988. This was only 35 years ago. 
These were the days of the Audi B3, Modern Talking, the Challenger disaster and the nuclear meltdown in the power plant of Chernobyl. Here, in the German Steam Locomotive Museum in Neuenmarkt, you can understand the meaning of a forgotten science. An entire industry was geared down to the design and the operation of steam locomotives. I have heard that there is only one single location left in Germany that has the ability to refurbish a steam locomotive. Guess the guys working there are what I will be in about 35 years. Steam locomotives and the service network were present anywhere in Germany. These locomotives weighed 150 tons. The estimated total quantity of steam locomotives ever produced is close to 100,000, but they have disappeared so permanently. They don't rot on the siding like a car that has been forgotten in the forest. They all went to the scrapyard. Only about 150 have survived and this figure can only get smaller in the future. The generations of people associated with the era of steam locomotives deserve not to be forgotten. My children's steam locomotive built from Infento parts is my applause and appreciation for them. May these impressions from the museum keep the spirit of this ancient technology alive.